Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I am Aditya. In this video, we will be using React Query version 4 to build a search box like this. So if I type something here, phone, it shows me the result. There we go. And if I type something, some other product name, something like this, it shows me the result. So let's see how we can do it. So without any further ado, let's begin. So we will be using this dummyjson.com where they provide some dummy APIs. So we'll be using this search products API over here and we'll be using React Query. So we'll be using the version 4, which is going to be the latest version. And to begin with, I have this simple project with React and Meet, which Tailwind integrated and React Query already installed. So once you install the React Query, so if I go over here, the steps are already given over here, installation. So you just need to run this command. And once you run this command, then you need to just be careful that you need to wrap your app component with this provider because we want to use react query in almost uh, most of the components further down the line so it's best to wrap it inside the app component with the provider so i have done that so inside app.jsx i have imported query client and query client provider there we have this query client equal to new query client and then it is being wrapped with the provider okay now I have here search box component. So let's start with writing our search box logic over here. So RFC, then we will need here an input, which is gonna be of type search. And let's bring this over here so that we can see what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm gonna get the search box component over here. And here, let's give it some styling. So if I see it side by side, oh, I need to run this. So npm run dev. go okay, so let's put it like this and we will have our code over here so this is our search box so let's close package.json now here we have into input type search now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give this thing some styling so i'm going to say this width of screen and height of screen uh this should be like this there we go this component so search box is imported and there we go we have the search box now let's get this in the center or we can keep it at the top if required but what i'm going to do here is we'll give this some padding like this so padding of let's say 12 there we go the search box is there and let's make it width full so class name i need to be careful because we cannot write simple class name, class like that. So here it will have padding of two and then with full, let's see how it looks like. There we go. Then on focus, we want no outline. So outline none. And also what do we need is when we focus, we want some ring around it. So ring and focus, oops, focus uh, ring of, let's give it, let's say purple of 500 there we go and if we focus on this there we go we get that nice ring let's make some rounded corners so here we get this on new line so we could say rounded md and we can also have let's say bg gray of let's say 400 and text let's say gray of 50 uh let's make this actually 600 like this so we can see the text being typed there we go and let's also have some color for the placeholder so placeholder will have the color of text gray maybe so this is 600 let's make it 500 and also let's add some placeholder text here so that would be okay let's be like this okay so placeholder and that would be enter your search term here there we go so if we now refresh this you'll see we have this nice placeholder everything is great now next thing we need to do is let's get some states so that we can bind it over here so i'm going to call this const search set search that's going to be from use state and we can straight away import use state from here so use state like this and then we don't need react .use state, and then we just need to bind them over here so value will be search and on change we have this set search okay perfect now next thing we will need is 
React query. Now, the good thing about React query is that you don't need to worry about writing a use effect hook or something like that to make API calls. Everything is managed very well for you. So you just need to focus on this hook and just make the API request correctly. Now, let me tell you how it works. So whenever this query key changes, there is a new API request made by this React query or this use query hook. So in other words, whenever you change this query key, this query function will run. So we just need to focus on this query key. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to write that uh, query key or I'm going to write the logic over here. So I'm going to say const data and we will also need is loading so that we can have that good if like the loading effect and all those things. And then we will need use query that's going to come from React query or tan stack react query then here it's gonna be an object so the first parameter will be the care to a query <laughs> query key now if you notice copilot has done a beautiful job for me by writing it before so whenever you pass this query key as an array so let's say as soon as there is a change in this search in, in this case this use state this query function will run in the other words it will make the api request so next we just need to write the query function so that would be fetching the users now it has taken the default one so if i we need the product one so what we need to do is we need to go over here look for the search products and then the logic with something like this so you make we can paste it over here and there we go so we don't need this one perfect so then we will get the data and then everything will work fine now let's do this let's make it in a function so that we can see if it's working correctly so we will return this that's true but also here i'm gonna say oops uh, we'll return it like this so we will do something like this return but also here i'm gonna say console.log and i want to see how many times it makes this request so if we go back over here uh okay so it has some problem over here so return okay let's see what's wrong here Oh, this comma. So let's remove this comma. There we go. Now let's open the console over here. Now, if we start typing, you'll see I'm typing and it's making the request. So there are so many API requests make, made. What do we want is we want some debounce value. Now, why do we, why do we need this? Why do we want to debounce it a bit? The reason being, let's say your API has throttling limit. For instance, let's say it can only accept 60 requests, let's say per second. So if you, someone is like a fast typer, they will keep on typing fast like this. So they might have that problem of throttling effect, or they might have like your server might throw an error saying that, Hey, uh, you crossed the limit or something like that. The best example is if you have used some third party APIs like Spotify, or let's say some GitHub APIs or something like that, they generally have that throttling, uh, like API rate limiter or throttle rate limiter. That's what it's called. And as soon as you cross that limit, then it gets freeze or gets get frozen for certain times. And then it gets back again after, let's say one minute or something like that. So to avoid those problems, we can debounce our input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new hook over here. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call it, let's say hooks and use debounce.js. Perfect. Now here I'm going to say export default function use debounce and then let copilot write the logic for it now what's going to happen here okay copilot wrote the logic i'll explain it no problem so what's happening here is let me import this quickly okay so we will pass our state in this case this search over here oh sorry this one over here to this use debounce as a value and we will specify the delay so we will specify by how many milliseconds it should debounce or what should be the delay in making that API request in other words. So here we will creating a state or here a state is created that's going to be a debounced value binded to the value that we asked to be debounced. Then there will be a use effect function, of course, because this we will need a use effect function behind the scene to set the new debounced value. So what's going to happen is after a particular delay, let's say 100 milliseconds, this debounced value is going to get a new value and it's going to get returned to our search box search box component okay in the meantime this use effect is also going to depend on the value and the delay we pass so as soon as the value changes this function is going to run this use effect function is going to run 
Now the problem problem is as we are setting the timeout and then every time there is change in value we are setting the timeout we need to clear the previous timeout. Okay, so for that reason this use effect function returns a function. So this function is generally known as clean up function. So it is cleaning up our timeout that's being set before. Okay, so let's go back over here get that debounced value. So we can have something like const uh, search let's call it debounce search term so it's not confusing use debounce so let's import sorry let's import this use debounce hook and we are passing the search value and we are setting a delay of let's say 500 millisecond let's keep it off like the 200 millisecond and now we will make this api call based on the debound search term so if we go back over here everything is fine now if we just oops if we just now make an API call, so let's remove everything from here. Now, if I start typing, you'll see there was just like one request made. Like after, so total there were two. So if I show it, you, show it to you again, let's remove all this from here. Let's remove this from here. And now if I, so the first fetching because it's on focus. And now if I start like type fast, you'll see it's made after I, I like after I stop typing. So it's not making continuous API request, it's making API request after certain delay, making it less API calls and less load on our server and also on our client side because when you make constant API request, your browser might get hanged. Now, once we have the data, we just need to iterate over that data and then show the res display results over here. So that's gonna be function search result. That's gonna take uh, is, lo is loading and also this thing over here search results uh, or in other words the data then what we need is so if it's loading it shows this div is loading otherwise it shows the title and oh, okay mm, not this is not i want go pilot <laughs> okay let me write it by myself so it's gonna return here a div and then it's going to map through each of those things okay this is what i want actually now we will style this so what's happening here is okay let's see what do we get from this dummy data so if we can sh see the output for this one so we get products from products the product's going to be an array so in this case we need to target the products so we will be passing data dot products and then from the products that's going to be the array and we will need to target the title so here it's going to be title and overall okay this looks good so we can just have text white and this we will make it okay let's do this width full then it's going to be bg gray of let's say 500 then we will divide it so divide let's say so it's going to be what or what like vertical divide so divide y and divide gray of maybe 300 okay and then over here uh this results which will be something like this we can give it okay we can give the padding actually from here so here i'm gonna say px of four and py of two yes that's what i want and there we go and here this all looks good let's make it gray of 100 okay perfect now let's bring that search box component over here sorry search result so search result is loading will be is loading and data will be data dot product okay now if we go back over here and you see it's still showing this so what do we need to do is we need to show this if there is any data so here I'm going to say data and then only show this. Otherwise, don't show this. There we go. And then if we remove this from here, okay, it's showing all the products as you could see, but we don't want to make the API request over here. So here I'm going to say if debound search term, then only make the request. Otherwise, just return an empty array okay so this would be debounced search term so it's going to be an object okay let's make this as an object so we have the consistency okay 
now then here we just need to say products that's going to be an empty array like this let's try this out so phone there we go we get the phone we just need this in the center uh, so what i'm going to do is uh, is there any item center so we don't need this one over here and uh, there we go and we can also give for each of these some padding so i'm going to say pb of maybe five there we go and okay let's do py of five or py of two actually there we go okay perfect so we have this search box now if we go back over here let's expand this and see how it works so let's remove all these so if we start from the beginning okay let's try here iphone there we go we get the iphone and let's say phone there we go we get the phone now if we remove everything and there we go we are back to normal again so this is how you can create a search box with react query and with react so that's all in this video hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button if you feel this video is worth sharing with your network please do share with your network and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel see you in the next video till the next time goodbye